In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I'm going to start a little differently today. I'm going to give you a reading from Genesis 3, part of the story of Adam and Eve. The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go and the dust shall be, you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. I do not feel enmity towards snakes or animosity or hostility. I am just very afraid of them. I do what I can to avoid them, but I do respect their right to exist as part of our ecosystem. One time a black snake was at the bottom of the steps I needed to use to get into the house. I decided to go through the garage instead. While on a hike in Arizona, I noticed a sign by the path, snakes have the right of way. My response was, always. <laughs> Another time, a friend called on the phone. When I answered, she started screaming in my ear. What she said was that a snake came through the doggy door and just went across her feet and was now somewhere in the living room or dining room. My response was, Joe will be right over. <laughs> Joe and a neighbor captured the snake and he took it across the street and let it loose in an empty wooded lot. But, you know, I know I could have been there, but I would have been useless. I probably would have stayed in the car until it was all over, so I just didn't go. Today's lessons mention snakes are what they call serpents, so I will focus on them a little bit. God led the people out of slavery in Egypt, through the wilderness, and into freedom. As the people journeyed toward the promised land, there were several instances where the people complained to God and to Moses. They were hungry, they were thirsty, they were tired, they had to travel for so long. They would ask if Moses and God would do something or were they just left, going to be left there to die. They saw slavery in Egypt as a better life than traveling through the wilderness to freedom. They had forgotten their hardship as slaves in Egypt and how they had cried out to God to be free from the slavery. This time when they cried out, their immediate needs were met, but then the unexpected happened. Today's lesson says, the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. The people again repented their complaints. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole lifted the bronze serpent on high so everyone could see it in the camp. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. It wasn't the serpent on the pole that healed them. It was the people's belief that they all, had, all that they had to do was look at the serpent and they would be healed. They were still God's chosen people. They were still loved by God. When the time came for the people to continue their journey through the wilderness, the Israelites took the bronze serpent on the pole and took it with them as they went on eventually to cover, conquer the land that was to be theirs. So what happened to the bronze serpent on a pole once the people were established in the promised land? A couple centuries later, in the eighth century before the common era, Hezekiah became king of Israel he was a son of Ahaz, who had allowed idols to be worshipped in the land. 
Hezekiah worshiped God, not idols. He reopened the Temple of Solomon, cleansed it of all idols. In the second book of Kings, we can read, Hezekiah did what was right in the sight of the Lord, just as his ancestor David had done. He removed the high places, broke down the pillars, and cut down the sacred pole. He broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made, for until those days the people of Israel had made offerings to it. It was called Nehustan. The bronze serpent had become an idol to them. Because it was worshipped, it had to be destroyed along with all the idols there. But the memory of the bronze serpent on a pole remained with the people. It was told generation to generation, and Jesus refers to it in today's gospel reading. Early in his ministry, word was quickly spreading that Jesus was teaching and healing people. He was starting to draw crowds wherever he went. One night, a teacher named Nicodemus came to speak with him. Jesus, Nicodemus asked questions, but he did not receive the answers he was expecting. Jesus said that Nicodemus was speaking of earthly matters, and Jesus was speaking of heavenly matters. Nicodemus would have to ponder Jesus' answers for quite a while. Then Jesus said, as the, Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Hundreds of years later, Jesus still remembered the bronze serpent on a pole, which was lifted up to save the Israelites, who were loved by God, and who believed and looked at it. Now Jesus said that the Son of Man must also be lifted up to save the whole world, but they must, too must look to him on a cross and believe. People have pondered this for many centuries. What did Jesus mean that the, wor in the, wor that the world God loved could be saved by Jesus lifted up on a cross? Jesus then says what is probably the best known verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. So it was a different kind of growth from the people just being those who were mentioned as loved to the whole world that is loved. Here in the middle of Lent, we are reminded of the good news of God's love for us and for the world. Tomorrow, we can continue the second half of our journey toward Easter through the penitential Lent. Amen.